uh, council meeting back to order. Um, general public comments, three minutes, name and address. Would anybody from the public like to speak about any item? Seeing none, close public comments. And minutes of October 15th. Those are not available. They'll be available uh, at the next meeting on November 19th. Okay, thank you. Adjustments to the agenda? None at this time. Items to be signed, treasurer's warrants. I've already signed them. Old business? Under old business, order number 1492 <coughs> is to act on the proposal from the Scarborough Land Trust and Friends of the Scarborough Marsh to pay back taxes with interest and costs for cleanup of property located at 11 Bradford Lane, Map U25, Lot 16A, in the amount of $38,846.74 and authorize the town manager to sign any and all documents relating to the transfer of ownership of this parcel to the Scarborough Land Trust. This item was tabled from the October 15th Town Council meeting. Well, certainly. Um, <coughs> I did introduce this last meeting, but I'll, I'll briefly do it again. Uh, this property was actually acquired by the town back in 2005, or 2004, excuse me, using land bond funds. The original deal contemplated the land going to the land trust, and at the time there was a life estate negotiated for Mr. Witten. Um, unfortunately, uh, things went awry, and uh, his obligations were not met, such that the town actually took back the land uh, through tax lien foreclosure. And the land has stayed in that status uh, ever since. Uh, Mr. Witten has passed away. We've, um, we, we obviously still own the property. We've gone through and cleaned up some of the exterior and, and some of the contents of the home. And the land trust, in coordination with the Friends of Scarborough Marsh, have approached the town to really reset the clock back to what we <coughs> contemplated. And uh, thankfully, through discussions with both organizations, <coughs> they agreed to make the town whole by way of paying back taxes and, and interest expense before the town uh, took it back by foreclosure. And some of our, uh, in fact, all of our uh, cleanup expenses that we've incurred in the last year or so. And so that's that sum of $38,846 uh, accounts for all of back taxes uh, and related fees and, and insurance. Um, I believe the matter was tabled by Councillor Holbrook with the suggestion that we go back and see if the land trust would be amenable to the town being perhaps actively involved in providing certain improvements to the property, uh, really to allow some limited uh, public access. I say limited because the property won't lend itself to much other than really a, a wonderful view. Um, and I'm pleased to report to the council that they seem very uh, willing to do that. And I've suggested uh, uh, you consider some additional language to the order just to kind of further clarify um, the relationship. Uh, beyond that, I see Rick Cheney in the audience. Rick uh, is a member of the Scarborough Land Trust Board. And Rick Vogel is with the Friends of Scarborough Marsh as well, if there are questions. Okay, would anybody from the public like to speak to Order 1492? Three minutes, name and address. Seeing none, I've closed the hearing. Do I have a motion? Move mm -hmm. approval. Second. Second. Discussion. Councilor Holbrook. Um, I would just like to offer a friendly amendment. So to add <coughs> to this order, just at the end as it reads, um, the following language with the town holding a conservation easement on the property and reserving the right to provide certain improvements to enhance public access. And that's in the form of a motion. Amendment. Discussion on the amendment. Yes. Okay. Um, discussion. I have one. Um, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <That's> okay. <laughs> no, uh, that makes sense to me. Uh, I would definitely like to see whatever small improvements could be made, like so people have access to it and go down and enjoy the property, so. <coughs> okay, um, I received a letter um, from uh, a homeowner that lives on that road um, at asking about the, uh, the road being maintained and whether or not we have rights to use it. So um, I'd like to see, I'm not going to be here, but I'd like to see that mitigated with uh, the uh, 
people that live on that road as far as um, trying to maintain it to a, uh, you know, from potholes and uh, whatever else we need to do if we're going to make access down there for, uh, you know, small parking lot, a trail to the um, marsh area. We're going to do that. I think we have the obligation to uh, work with the uh, so, um, Tom, yeah, if I could just answer. offer a couple yeah. of comments in that regard. I don't have a definitive answer, but I did uh, research the deeds and provided those to the town attorney. He's reviewed those, and um, by my reading and his cursory reading, it certainly appears that the town w has the right to, to use Bradford Lane to access the property. I think we need to further clarify whether that right extends to the public's right to do so. Uh, beyond that, I know uh, Paul Austin, the president of the land trust, is in touch, uh, has been in touch uh -huh. with that resident, and so I have full expectations that between the three of us we'll uh, coordinate those issues of access and maintenance. I just want to get that out so I'll know about. Uh, Councilor Holbrook. I would just like to ask the manager if the language from the amendment that was added, does that give you the coverage enough to, to work? I, I believe so. I mean, the, the language is embedded in the deed, so I mean, okay. it's uh, really nothing we have control over. It's something we need to get see clarification for um, on. So I I don't believe I need any further authorization other than what's provided here. Okay. Okay. Any further discussion on the amendment? Seeing none. All those in favor? Opposed. Back to the main amendment. Uh, the main motion, sorry. Any discussion on the main motion? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? None. Terrific, thank you. New business. Under new business, order number 1494 is to act to authorize the town manager to sign the necessary paperwork to purchase property located at 271 U.S. Route 1, map U41, lot 10 in the amount of 313000 plus closing costs for a total amount not to exceed 316000 Funds will be used from the Public Safety Building Capital Improvement Account as authorized by the Town Council on June 17, 2009. Oh. Certainly, uh, I'm, I've been in direct conversation, negotiation with the property owners um, at 271 U.S. Route 1. Uh, just for reference, uh, this is the third property down from Town Hall right here on Route 1. And uh, again, by way of history, uh, three years ago the town acquired the other two properties closer to Town Hall uh, and, and have continued to rent those properties in the meantime. Uh, we have <coughs> gone back and forth five different times with the sellers and I'm pleased to uh, be before you this evening. and. Um, advise that we are under contract for a purchase price of $313,000. I also have negotiated a up to a four-year leaseback provision with the current property owner, uh, and essentially we will have no costs or obligations during that period. But it's an opportunity for them to perhaps uh, recoup additional or sub rent um, during that period, uh, and. We're not quite sure how that property will be used at this point. There are some different ideas, and I, I'm confident in saying that during within that four-year period, I don't think there's any uh, use that I can envision. So I'm comfortable recommending that uh, this doesn't put the town in any kind of peril. In fact, what it does do is it really preserves options for the future and gives us the certainty today that we have the property within our control. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, would anybody, anyone from the public like to speak to Order 1494? Mm -hmm. Three minutes, name and address. Anyone? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Do I have a motion? Move to approve. Second. Discussion? Councilor Holbrook. <coughs> Um, just to, I guess, my, my two quick cents to chime in, um, I do plan on supporting this. Um, I, I know public safety building is likely to be a back burner. I think the original um, long-term long plan was for 2016, and, and that's likely not to happen, but, but certainly this helps us preserve that option um, so that when we, we do come to that point that we're ready, the property's available. Um, and the one other thing is I just did want to note um, 
this isn't um, a bond that we have. This was some investment income because we had um, a sale from, from some property on another location in Route 1. Um, so there is no financial maybe, impact to the town, if you will, as far as, you know, to pay bond, you know, interests or, you know, have to go out to bond for it. So, um, you know, I think it's a smart investment for our long-term future. Anyone else? Councilor Katerina. Um, as a real estate professional, uh, I think it makes perfect sense to invest now in this particular property. Um, I know in my professional uh, life, we're seeing property values increase in Scarborough, and I am, I mean, I don't have a crystal ball, but if I did, I'd be very wealthy, but uh, <laughs> um, I think it makes sense because um, we'd be buying now, and I can only see this property increasing, and it'd be a great return for the town in value down the line. Thank you. Council Blaze? No comment. Okay. Council Donovan. Uh, uh, to me, the, um, the compelling factors here are that uh, the 2010 appraisal of the property uh, is uh, uh, what the purchase price as set to be, uh, we're in a much better environment today, and it's reasonable to expect that we will be in an improving environment in terms of land values. Mm -hmm. uh, the property abuts Memorial Park and other properties that the town has been purchasing, <coughs> uh, uh, and therefore has unique value to the town that's not shared by other buyers. And when you're buying property, it's the value in the eyes of the beholder, the person who's buying. Uh, uh, here, uh, while we may not have a use uh, for this for years to come, because the one potential use that has certainly been focused upon is the public safety building use, and that may be years off, you cannot control when something becomes available. You have to be willing to uh, act to acquire it uh, at the time that it becomes available because land is not, doesn't have the same kind of uh, replacement as, as cash or money or other goods. So uh, this is, has a unique quality that's uh, important to this town. Uh, uh, I think that uh, we will benefit from getting it at this price now and in the years to come, if it, if it were then available, I expect that it would be available at a higher price uh, because real estate uh, has typically over the last 100 to 150 years, when you look at that statistical data, gone up at you know, 2 or 3% every single year. Uh, and we would be a long-term holder of the property. So when you look at all those factors, that are in play, I think it's important for us to act now. It sounds to me like these negotiations have been rigorous and that the town has made every effort to get the best possible deal that it could get. And that to me is what's important, that we've negotiated hard uh, uh, for the benefit of the town to use its uh, funds wisely. And I think that we have in this case. So. All, all things considered, I would be prepared to support this. Anyone else? Mm -mm. That. All those in favor? Opposed? <coughs> Order number 1495 is actually the request to certify the results of the municipal elections that were held on Tuesday, November 4, 2014. Um, I present for certification by the Town Council the election results for the municipal elections that were held on Tuesday, November 4th, 2014. Town Council, Babine Sean A, 4,340 votes. Feely, Roger H, 2,230 votes. Benedict James E, 1,630 votes. Hayes, Peter F, 4,280 votes. Summers, William F, 3,158 votes. St. Clair, Catherine, 4,026 votes. Sullivan, uh, Jr., Richard A., 3,678 votes. 
Board of Education, Christine Messingale, Messingale Christine A., 5,635. Murphy, Kelly Noonan, 6,921. There was a write-in candidate for that race. It was Michael Turk, 1,284. Trustees for the Sanitary District, Andre, uh, Andreessen Charles, 5,407. Anu Ronald C., 3,540. Greenleaf, Jason A., 5,942. McSorley, Robert A., 4,308. Question one was regarding the fire truck. The yes votes received 6,129. 6, the no votes received 3,771. Question two was the property revaluation. Yes votes were 3,088. The no vote was 6,715. No errors or omissions? Anybody <laughs> dealt that? Okay, um, need a motion? Most approval. <coughs> Second. <coughs> All those in favor? Right. Non action <laughs> items. Yeah. I've got one, Richard. Yeah, um, non action items. Yeah, I think it is. <laughs> we'll find out. Okay. I was requested to read a letter into the record. Okay. Is that all right? Yeah. Go ahead. Dated November 5th, 2014. Dear Scarborough Town Councilors, Scarborough Citizens for the Responsible Placement of Cell Towers has officially withdrawn our petition to overturn the Cell Tower Ordinance. <coughs> Approximately 630 residents signed notarized petitions and another 300 signed petitions that failed to get notary signatures for a total of about 900. By town charter, we, we could have had another five days. However, for various reasons, we have decided to withdraw early to eliminate the need for the clerk's office to verify signatures and to allow the newly elected town council an opportunity to work on the ordinance. As we have been saying during our petition drive, this ordinance is in some ways better than the old mm -hmm. ordinance and in some ways much worse. We continue to have grave concerns about some, of, some parts of it and will continue to ask the council to address those parts. There are also some minor tweaks that could be taken care of tonight if this council was so inclined since there is no longer a petition in process. We want to respect the, the change in council, however. A new town council group will be sworn in soon, and we are hopeful that the entire new group will be willing to engage in civil discussions without creating decisiveness because of our differences. Our group would like to help the council adopt an ordinance that respects it, residential neighborhoods, property values, the environment, the health, welfare, and safety of residents, putting the citizens above corporate interests. We look forward to working with you. Sincerely, Susan Foley Ferguson for the Scarborough Families for their responsible placement of cell towers. Thank you, Councilor Blaise. Okay, with that, um, standing and special committee reports. <coughs> that comes for Blaze. Um, the only thing that I've got is I attended a planning board meeting a couple weeks ago, and at the planning board meeting, they passed a, a new procedure to automatically send any cell tower application to a town expert for opinion prior to being heard by the planning board. I think it's an excellent yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. uh, they also had a workshop that evening, which I was not a able to attend, but I believe Councillor Donovan did attend that. So, Bill, you want to bring us up to date on that? Yeah, certainly. I'll let you, you want to wrap up and I'll... Okay. That's it for me. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Um, what... Can you, I'll let you hit on that. I'll uh, go with Councillor Katarina next. Um, Conservation Commission will be meeting November 10th um, at 7 p.m. here at Town Hall. Um, we, they have been asked to review the um, national proposed National Guard contract zone um, at the request of the Planning Board, and I encourage any citizens who have an interest 
uh, in that meeting to attend. It will be here at Town Hall again November 10th, Monday at 7 o'clock. And I regret I was unable to make the long range planning committee meeting. So I don't have any updates on that. Very good. Councilor Donovan. Uh, as Councilor Blaze said, uh, in advance of the planning board meeting uh, the other night, uh, the planning board held a workshop uh, to review the new cell tower uh, ordinance and applications that they anticipated being filed. Uh, as soon as the uh, ordinance becomes uh, in effect on November 15th. 15th. Uh, Dan Bacon uh, spent, uh, and I couldn't stay for the entire hour, but uh, uh, did a very careful review for the planning board of uh, the particular powers and authorities that were uh, embedded in uh, the site plan review uh, conditions uh, that the planning board could exercise. And there was a lot of questions about how it would work in this situation or that situation. And the, uh, to summarize the reaction of the planning board members, that, uh, there was a real sense of satisfaction that the uh, ordinance had been well crafted and that uh, Dan was able to point to, in every instance, a, a particular provision that would give the planning board the authority and the discretion as to the siting and situating of uh, cell towers on, uh, on properties uh, so as to protect both the view and uh, the impact it might have on neighboring properties. It was a very effective uh, start uh, from the work that we did uh, to adopt the ordinance. And that was the only committee uh, that I uh, attended this uh, last two weeks. Thank you, Councilor Donovan. Councilor Holbrook. Um, <clears throat> I have two quick things. Uh, the, the first one is um, that Historic Preservation met um, last night, <coughs> and as a guest, um, we had a member of our code office, a new member, Mr. Um, Longstaff. Longstaff. I called him Longfellow last night by accident. <laughs> uh, but Mr. Longstaff, uh, and, and he gave um, some very interesting insight to uh, um, some of the efforts and some of the thoughts we've been, we've been kind of kicking around about um, how we could streamline and make it easier um, for homeowners and, and learned um, some pretty interesting, significant stuff. There's already some processes in place within the National Building Code and within the Fire Code as well that makes allowances for historic buildings. Um, so, you know, especially speaks to, you know, as long as the intent is there, you know, life safety is still the first priority, but that there is the, those wiggle rooms built into the code as long as um, there is an, a list that's, that's been certified um, designating those properties as historic. So some great news. We're going to start um, trying to move forward with that. Um, and, and just kind of verify that we're, we're through the process of, you know, making sure that it's a, an appropriate list and meets all the criteria. Um, they will be meeting again on December 2nd, which is the first Tuesday of the, of the month, um, at their regular meeting time here at Town Hall, which is 6.30. Um, it's not lined up yet, but um, they, they are hoping to have um, the state's main historic preservation office come down to talk to us Again, just about how to kind of verify and certify that you know the properties that are identified are you know meet the criteria, um, and just talk to us about historic initiatives in general. Um, tomorrow evening is Housing Alliance. Um, they'll be meeting at 6:30 here in the Town Manager's Conference Room. Um, you'll have to forgive me. We do have a guest speaker, Derwood Parkinson. <laughs> Thank you. Um, who, who's going to be, again, talking us about um, some of our current rules that we have and, and ones that we don't and some, maybe some other initiatives that are, that are going on in the area um, to kind of look at what we have and how we can improve upon them. And then um, <coughs> that's it for my, my special committee reports. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next, Counts oh, Town Manager's Report. Yes, a couple quick points of interest. I uh, just want to report the Transportation Committee uh, continues to meet. Um, most recently, they've been looking at the intersection of Holmes Road and Payne Road. 
and uh, actually have recommended and some changes have been made to the, uh, the phasing of the signal timing, so no cost improvements, and we've actually heard unsolicited three positive comments that uh, <laughs> clearly has helped, particularly those folks that are uh, in the morning going down Payne Road looking to uh, ideally go left on Payne Road. It's been problematic <coughs> apparently, and um, modifying that timing has improved significantly. We're also going to do a similar uh, look here at Oak Hill just to see if, uh, if that's some <coughs> change in the phasing of, of the lights will, will provide some improvement. Also, I just want to thank the council for uh, embracing the idea of, to, of buying the property next to us just to preserve our options. I appreciate your foresight, uh, and it remains to be seen. I do think that there should be a thorough process to understand what the best use of that, process, uh, that property is, but that will be in, frankly, the years to come. I don't see that anytime soon. I'm also pleased to report uh, the town as a charter member of Eco Maine, um, and actually a uh, part owner, therefore, uh, received a dividend this year. Uh, all told, a, the dividend was about a million dollars to mm -hmm. the member communities, and our share is about $110,000. Nice. Um, so not only are assessments going down, <coughs> which helps budgets, but we're also seeing a dividend. Uh, so that's very, very good news. Um, also, just to report, uh, there has been a kind of an administrative working group working on the ICE Arena siting evaluation process. That group has met once, and they've actually worked fairly quickly through the process and focused their attention on one particular site. Uh, that's a site across from the library. Um, if you can picture where the current basketball courts are, that's, a, uh, that's, a, that's that property. They'll be meeting once, if not twice, before uh, they make recommendations back to this body uh, in time for December 3rd. So things are moving forward. And I just want to take my moment uh, with the microphone to thank Chairman Sullivan for his service, and I've very much enjoyed working with you. Thank you. Um, and I certainly extend my thanks to Councillor Benedict as well. I wish her here, uh, but I'll provide that, uh, those congratulations to him personally. And lastly, just thank and congr congratulate the residents. We had over 10,600 mm -hmm. voters yesterday. Um, Tony, by my calculations, that's about 67% turnout, or 66. 67. 67, yes. which is remarkable for a midterm, and, and we should all be proud of ourselves for making the effort. <coughs> it just uh, interestingly, 4,000 of those were done by absentee. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is, seems to be a bit lower than it's been in the past. Mm -hmm. we've, we've often been averaging about half of ballots cast by absentee, yes. um, but we hope that we'll continue to gain in popularity and make mm -hmm. Tody's job a little easier in that <laughs> all those absentees can be run mm -hmm. through in advance of Election Day or during Election Day. Um, so again, congratulations, Scarborough. Good job getting out to vote. Council Blaze. Um, last Sunday we had a uh, Benjamin, uh, tour of the Benjamin Farm schedules. Unfortunately, <laughs> the uh, weather <laughs> was not very uh, conducive. Um, so they have agreed to. Uh, Give us a tour this Sunday, uh, November 9th at 1.30 p.m., so I certainly hope that all the counselors can attend. Um, and I want to personally thank Richard for all the help that he's given me over the past two years, and I want to wish him good luck. Thank you. And uh, I think you've done a wonderful job. Mm -hmm. And my buddy here. Um, <laughs> Jim, uh, he's helped me an awful lot with these little whispers, <laughs> <laughs> steering me in the right direction. I, I'm going to miss him. I'm going to miss both of you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Holbrook. I wanted to go last. Oh, okay. Better Councilor go Katerina. <laughs> Councilor Katerina. Um, uh, a couple of things. Um, we had a uh, town council table at the election yesterday at the after the polling, and I thought it went really well. It was, yeah, it was, it I had fun. Uh, you know me. Um, <laughs> we uh, had some great discussions with a number of people. We gave out information. We had maps. We answered questions. We took down people's comments and all notebooks, so we would remember to uh, uh, bring them back for discussion or follow up. 
Um, <clears throat> and we also have an email list that we are compiling. So if people want to stop by, I'm going to say the town clerk's office. I'm looking at you, Tody. <laughs> and um, give us email addresses. We're going to be working on a communications effort to do emails on a monthly basis that uh, updates us what's going on with the town um, and important matters and ordinance committee topics and whatever. So, um, you know, if you're interested in being on that list, please let us know. Um, I also, I mean, I know I'm a fear, well, I'm not a newbie anymore, but um, I wanted to thank um, Councillor Benedict. I've enjoyed serving with him. I brought him a jar of honey that I'll bring to his house. If you're watching, Jim, I'll be over with the honey. Um, um, you've, you, you know, you've done a great job serving, and I will miss working with you. And if people would just bear with me for one second, I met with a, a troop of uh, Girl Scouts today. The Girl Scouts were handing out the voter stickers yesterday. And they asked me to come today to talk about, well, what's it like being on a town council and when you have disagreements? And I told them the story of Councillor Sullivan and I. <laughs> <laughs> and how, you know, when you first meet somebody, you're kind of like, okay, I'm going to have to deal with this person. But that's okay. We'll see what we can do. Um, and it was interesting. Um, talking to them about how um, Councilor Sullivan and I, we come from opposite ends of the spectrum frequently on different things, but um, I've always appreciated the fact that he's willing to talk and listen and discuss and agree to disagree if that's what we need to do, and that's so important. So um, I'm going to miss that. And, uh, <laughs> Definitely. But you have my number, so you know where to find me. Um, but thank you so much. For your service. Thank you. Councilor Donovan. Uh, for a second, I'd like to talk about uh, 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 a seniors issue. Uh, probably many of you saw the article in the paper last week in the Portland Press Herald on uh, the Social Security uh, uh, Administration's uh, cost of living adjustment. Uh, and it went up 1.7%. So you, people who are on Social Security got an increase of 1.7% this year in their annual payment. And the article went on to say that <clears throat> over the last five years, it's gone up 3.6% total. And uh, that's point, I don't know, point 0.8 or less per year. Uh, so if, in other words, it's really small. Uh, but people's expenses have in reality gone up to a great deal more. And if you look at the tax rate <coughs> that uh, uh, people have had to bear for the last five years, it's over 20%. So incomes fixed, small, going up 3%, 3.6% over five years. The taxes on their property, one of the most expensive parts and one of the things that they can't do without living somewhere, going up over 20%. So I think we have to be mindful when these mm -hmm. numbers come at you, us that uh, uh, low-income seniors uh, suffer disproportionately to others because they don't have that option of going back to work or looking for another job. Uh, that, that's something that I think when, uh, and I'm looking forward to the budget process where we will look carefully, as well as all the ways we can do uh, this. And I know uh, Councillor Sullivan has been a, uh, and uh, Councillor, uh, 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 we have pushed this issue before, but we need to push it harder. Because in recent years, uh, it has been more difficult uh, for seniors. So that was one thing. On a much brighter note, uh, uh, Scarborough High School field hockey team won the state championship. Uh, and uh, the person who, and we've talked about this great success before, uh, kids who we know are on the team, but I just wanted to, uh, I was hearing things about Coach uh, Kerry Mariello uh, as being one of the exceptional coaches uh, in field hockey in the state, mm -hmm. and, uh, and this is uh, quite, a, uh, quite a, a program that they have going, so I wanted to recognize her 
and finally, uh, to recognize uh, uh, Richard Sullivan as a fabulous chairman this past year. Wonderful, wonderful job. And, uh, and also, uh, thank you for your service for many years, and thank you to Jim Benedict, who I've come to really enjoy as an, another uh, fine person uh, who is always looking out for the best interests of this town. Thank you, Bill. Council Hober. <clears throat> so, um, just to touch base on a couple quick quick thoughts, um, just wanted to say thank you to all the people who spent time down at the polls yesterday. That um, was definitely, you know, like some of the other councilors, you know, we were there pretty much a good chunk of the day, and yeah, that was a, that was a zoo. <laughs> um, but I, I do want to also know it, it was kind of brought up repeatedly, you know, some of the dynamic about the setup, what was an issue. Um, so something to really be working for, looking into the next go around, um, you know, things with like entrances and exits right. and steps and, you know, the elderly or, or those, you know, with strollers and carriages had some issues yesterday. So parking. just kind of, you know, that, and the same thing with parking, you know, the handicap parking and whatnot. So, um, but unbelievable effort from staff and the volunteers and, you know, th thank you. you. You did an excellent job. Um, it's funny. Um, I'm going to piggyback on, on Bill's, Bill's thing with the taxes a little bit. Um, a couple weeks ago, I, I did read about the, the release for, the, for 2015 for Social Security. Um, you know, and, and it certainly was a thought that it has crossed my mind um, <coughs> at the time, and, and I'm hoping to look at for an angle for you know this year is you're, you're talking. You know, we, we talk about sometimes, you know, well, feel good numbers. You know, how do you come up with that number? Why do you say con consumer price index? Um, why do you make these targets? And, and so maybe being a little more specific about the target that we're trying to, to achieve. You know, sometimes there's a divide, I feel, in the community. You know, it's not that folks don't want to have good education. It's a matter of you don't have the money to pay for it. <laughs> um, your income is what your income is, as much as you'd like to say. So um, the interesting thing is is that equates to about, at best, $200 this year for, for the average senior. You, you, you're only talking. They're getting about $200 more this year. Um, so maybe having a bigger and better focus on these are our most susceptible folks. This is where we tend to have div division in our community. And, and you know, having that in our forefront and upfront in, in mind is, you know, certainly I would not ever support exceeding that dollar amount for, to them at this point, knowing the impacts that they've had over the last couple of years in their tax bills. <laughs> on top of the oil bill, on top of the grocery bill, on top of the, um, so you know, th those are the figures that we need to look at to come up with an appropriate. Um, the nice thing is, and the good news is, the town has a lot of great growth coming, and it's, mm. you know, you figure the revenues, you f do your expected growth, and then you get the, the, the how much the tax rate goes number. So, um, I just want to thank very much, Richard, for for your time. Yeah, yeah, I think you did a great job as as chair this year. Um, I, I really see a lot of the, you know the good work and steps and efforts that you've made this year with the workshops and, and, and trying to you know bring bring things together a little more and some more communication with us. You know I really see that going forward into next year. Um, th those are some great initiatives that you started, um, and of course I'd like to thank James Benedict, uh, James Benedict for you know his time as well. Um, I congratulate Kate, but. <laughs> Not here at the moment, but um, before I <laughs> get any further, don't mind me ducking and hiding because I had to hide it. Um, <laughs> we do have our traditional black for our exiting chair, and we'd like to town staff as well as other members of the council present you with a plaque for um, all your hard work and really, again, just a great <laughs> effort and stride that you've made in, in bridging some of the gaps and. Maybe we can entice you to a committee. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, with that um, being said, I'm glad to hear um, 
and I think uh, different um, <coughs> things that have been started, I think it's in good hands with this group that's here tonight, um, working on the, uh, the senior um, issues, such as the um, uh, circuit breaker, that the mm -hmm. local circuit breaker program the town has. Um, I, I'd like to see efforts put more towards that, um, making that better. I hope we can, uh, you guys can pick up with the uh, fuel assistance donations mm -hmm. program again this year and work on, um, you know, more friendly ordinances towards business. That's a, that'll be a lifeline to lowering the, uh, uh, the residential property taxes. The more businesses we get here, I think the better off we'll be. Um, some local uh, jobs in the process will be created. They'll make Scarborough a much better place. And with that, i got a statement that I... Uh, that I wrote. I just don't want to miss anything, so I wrote it down instead of trying to go from my head like I usually do. I'd like to say um, Town Council had a very challenging year this year, uh, dealing with two very controversial ordinances and a very contentious budget. Just the same, I had a wonderful time working with a very productive thought and thoughtful council. No matter which side the issue the uh, councilor was on, uh, we all treated each other with respect and the utmost respect, and we were friendly and courteous <coughs> to each other. It made for a pleasant atmosphere in which to serve as chair. I would like to thank each and every councillor for making this possible and for their countless hours of service to the Scarborough residents. I would like to thank all the town staff for the countless hours that they put in in order to make councillors' tasks a mm -hmm. less burdensome chore. I would like to thank the Scarborough residents for their support, of my support for over seven years on the council, and I look forward to serving my community again in the future. I would like to thank my wife, Amanda, and my children for the sacrifices they made for all the nights I was away from home here in town council or on committees. I was truly honored serving the great, greatest town in the state of Maine. And I'd like to thank each and every one of you. You were like family, very helpful, very courteous. I can't say it enough, and you'll be missed. And um, I'd like to congratulate uh, Sean Babine, Peter Hayes, and Kate Sinclair on their win, and I hope them well, and I hope you guys all work well together, as well as we did mm -hmm. over the last two years. It's been very nice. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. <coughs> okay, and with that, uh, motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. All those in favor. Okay. The wrap. <coughs>